Hi everybody, it's Peter Zellums, Greeny Flicks Adventure 8 and welcome to another video. Today I am talking two cameras. The Leica M10R with the Apo 35mm Summicron F2 and also my Leica M11 with the Noctilux 50mm F0.95 Aperture. These two cameras I'll be taking to a wedding. I've been invited to a wedding, not as a photographer, not as a B-roll photographer, but I've been invited as a guest, which means I'm the C-roll photographer. When it comes to any event, whether it be family or as a guest to an event and if I'm participating as a guest and I want to take some photographs or I've been asked to take some photographs I find the the best scenario is to be inconspicuous and the best way to be inconspicuous is what I've found over the years is with a small camera but one that has the quality of a large camera and that's the reason why I enjoy using the Leica M series cameras way back from my early days as a wedding photographer using the Leica M4. Uh, where are we? Leica M4? Leica M4 film camera. I used to take entire wedding from woe to go with five rolls of 35 millimeter ISO, ASA, 100 film and um, yeah do the whole wedding in about 160 160, 180 shots out of 180 shots, you would be aiming to get about a hit rate of about a half, 50%, where those photographs could be made into prints, large prints, or could be group shots, or could be, yeah, it could be sold. So basically, the entire wedding on five, or yeah, usually five rolls of film. How things have changed over the years, but anyway. So I'm invited as a C-roll photographer, which is great. I enjoy that. My two favorite focal lengths, without a doubt, are 35mm and also the 50mm. I've chosen to put the 50mm f0.95 Noctilux lens on the M11. And I'll, my plan is to shoot... This lens, both in the evening, in really low light, ambient light, uh, artificial light, but also during the day, and the forecast is sunny conditions. So the great thing about the M11, it's got electronic shutter. It can go one, up to one, one sixteen thousandths of a second without using an, an ND filter of any kind. And... Um, I'm hoping to shoot wherever possible, wide open, depending on the situation, and if necessary, stop down where I need a larger depth of field because of the type of shot I'm actually taking. And then the other camera, uh, the M10R, I've got the the uh, 35mm Apo on there. It's f2. Now, that's two two stops difference. That's, that's quite a bit. It's going to be interesting to see how what what that means as far as the shooting in low light conditions is going to be like. Being the C-roll photographer, I suspect I'll be using, particularly once we've got the larger groups and we've got all the guests there. Being the C-roll photographer, I'll probably be keeping well clear of the main photographers so they can get the shots they need to get. And I'll get some of the other shots maybe from the side from a different perspective, which will give a bit of variety for the wedding couple. So the 50mm will work great because it gives me that greater reach and I don't have any problems with having too much light because of the electronic shutter. And also being a bit further away it means that if I need to crop, well with the 60 megapixel sensor on this I've got a lot of cropping room that I can do to give me a lot of detail as well. Um, now shooting the two stops slower, it gives me a uh, f2, gives me a greater depth of field, 35mm, so at least in the group shots I should have a greater depth of field, it will be easier to photograph in low light conditions. I won't be using a flash, so that means in the low light conditions I might be pushing up the ISO so that I can at least keep a higher shutter speed, particularly if there's a lot of action around the place. 
Now, in the old days, I used to carry around a large flash, which I could, a Mets flash, which I could bounce light off all over the place. So at the reception in the evening, I could freeze the action with the flash and being a really strong flash, that worked really well. And it worked well for, you know, group shots and party shots and dancing shots. It freeze the action, it, it captured a lot of the excitement that happens in the reception. If I'm not, I'll be using natural light here, which means we're going to have blurry situations. We're going, we, I'm anticipating we're going to have low light challenges. So it'd be interesting to see how I use those two lenses and camera combinations. I will include in the photographs um, the metadata as much as I can. Being M series cameras, it means that I don't necessarily, rec well, it, the, the camera guesses to its best ability what sort of uh, aperture was used, but if you just accept my word as being, I'm trying to shoot wide open all the time, F2 wherever possible on the Apple 35, and 0.95 ap uh, aperture on the Noctilux, but obviously I will be stopping down from time to time. But you'll be able to see the ISOs that I'm using, and also you'll be able to see the shutter speeds that I'm using. Um, all right, so let's have a look at some photographs, and uh, then I might uh, just add a few more comments to the photographs as well. Well, concluding and summing up. Okay, where shall we start? The M10R, all right, um, with the APO. Yes, the APO worked really well. Uh, having larger field of view, view, 35 millimeter and F2 meant that I had a larger depth of field, I can get the focus much easier. Uh, shooting late at night at the reception, uh, it was a real challenge trying to freeze the action. Uh, so I had to choose one 125th of a second to freeze the action as much as possible. It's not so much my camera shake, but it's all the movement that happens in, uh, in a reception in a party environment. I mean, you can't even get people to sit still long enough. They will pose and then move straight away. Uh, so you've got to get the shot really quickly. Uh, again, as I said earlier, um, having a flash overcomes that because even with all that movement, you can still freeze the action with a flash. So that is a potential, but then it's big. Um, you can get away with it if you're a main photographer, then people expect you to have the flash. But if you are a guest and you are the C photographer, then 
I don't think flash works very well. All right, I was shooting right up to 3200, I think even 64 maybe in, in the shot or two. Um, so uh, the M10R handled that quite well, I think, under the circumstances. And once you do the editing and everything, uh, I think you still end up getting a good result. So now what I found was that, again, being the C photographer, I didn't have to get in close to really any shot. So I didn't take advantage of the close focus of the APO in this case here. It was always well beyond the 0.7 meters, I think. Usually in the 1 to 1.5 meter uh, focus range or maybe a bit further away. So that was the M10R, it's great using that camera. Uh, people did comment uh, that, uh, you know, people that were knowledgeable in photography, um, wondering what sort of camera it was and how small it was, and uh, so that's, that's good. Uh, these sort of events, it's great to get out with the Noctilux. I don't use the Noctilux enough and I used it quite a bit for the wedding and it was great using it. I was concerned that I was going to have problems getting it focused in a uh, wedding, in an event, in a party environment, but I ended up actually getting pretty good at it. Um, wherever possible, uh, pre-guessing what the distance was, so I was already in the range so that by the time I put it up to my eye then I could just have to do that fine tuning to take the shot. And it wasn't unusual, and, and this is typical events. People eventually notice that you're about to take the shot and then they do a pose, and you might have missed it straight away, but you can communicate with them because they are close enough to be able to communicate with a 50 millimeter lens or a 35, where you can just ask them to redo the action or whatever, and then by that time I've got the focus right to take the shots. So that worked well. So, uh, would I... Would I change <laughs> that situation? Um, look, if I'm shooting the Noctilux, it's great having that low light capability, but also that sh shallow depth of field, and therefore the M11 is the right camera to use it on. It handles all those shutter environment, shutter speed environments right up to 1 16th thousandths of a second with electronic shutter. It does have the internal memory as well, so you basically got redundancy built into the camera. The M10R, only has the one uh, SD card and um, okay reliability this is another interesting point uh, the M11 did seize up so I had to take the battery out and put it back in uh, I believe it does happen from time to time anybody else have that experience not sure whether there's any firmware updates to overcome that the M10R was completely reliable in that sense it was uh, never turns off it always just keeps on operating uh, battery life in both cases was excellent, so I didn't have any problems with that. Um, I think, and the results, both lenses are great. And yeah, the amount of detail you get on the 35 millimeter Apple was incredible. All right, so the other things that I brought along were the electronic viewfinder for the M11, and also the electronic viewfinder for the M10R. I uh, I started use I, I did use the viewfinder the electronic viewfinder on the M11 and what I found was that it just was too slow to capture the action. It was too slow for me. <laughs> I found using the rangefinder, um, the optical rangefinder in low light conditions, I could get the focus really quickly, even with the Noctilux at 0.95. And just take the shot rather than electronic viewfinder which as soon as you change the focus depending on how you set it up as soon as you change the focus it would zoom in then you'd be looking at the whether you got in focus or not and um, with electronic viewfinder I just found that slower yes you could possibly you could probably get more accurate focus but it was slower so I just Basically used a few shots, took it off, and then just continued on with the rangefinder. All right, well, I hope you enjoyed those photographs. Um, do you get invited to be the C-roll photographer? What's your choice of camera? And um, what's your choice of lens as a C-roll guest photographer? I hope you found that interesting. 
If it's the first time to my channel, or you haven't already subscribed, then do subscribe. And if you like the video, then give it a thumbs up. And that's how you support the channel. That's how more people find out about the channel. And hopefully the content is useful for them as well. Another way you can actually support the channel is through merchandise. Uh, a new facility, a new feature that's available on YouTube is actually connecting up a shopping site to the YouTube channel. And that's what I've done now. And uh, as you know, this is Greeny Flix Adventure 8. It's photography as well as adventure travel. Uh, so I've created a shopping cart or shopping site that is connected so when you look at a video below in the description there you'll see there's actually a link to it's called spread shop and there's a whole bunch of merchandise with adventure 8 logo adventure 8 logo on it whether it be men's clothing apparel uh, women's clothing um accessories uh, cups mugs aprons uh, bottles, drinking bottles, all sorts of things. So if you'd like to support the channel, then maybe consider getting some merchandise. Uh, Christmas is coming up and um, holiday festival. Oh yes, almost forgot to say, um, with the launch of the spread shop site and all the apparel stuff, uh, there's actually a 15% discount on any orders that uh, come through. It was launched on the 10th of December 2022, so the next 14 days is a 15% discount. If there's anything on the site there that's of interest to you, go order it. You can use the discount code REDEEM and that will give you a 15% discount. So that's, uh, that's how you can support the channel. Grab some merch for yourself and um, it's all very simple. Just go down, have a look what you like. It, it redirects you to the spread shop uh, site and there will be a whole bunch of stuff there you can see. Thanks again for watching and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers. Bye.